Hello friends, once again welcome back to our channel Lyceum of Politics. Now as I have finished a series of lectures on the great Greek philosopher Plato which I think you have liked and enjoyed. Today actually I intend to discuss with you the political thoughts of another great philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli. Now Machiavelli who is considered as a child of Italian Renaissance. Keeping up to the style of Italian Renaissance, his ideas strictly stand on the hard facts of human life and not on any religious concepts, my friends. He is regarded more as a practical politician rather than a political philosopher. So, let's start our journey on Machiavelli. Now, friends, before I move on to the ideas of Machiavelli, let me give a very short introduction about himself. Niccolo Machiavelli was born in Italy. In 1469, he was a man of a time when the Italian Renaissance was at the full swing. And thus, it is an undoubted fact, my friends, that the Renaissance had left a good influence on him. Not only in respect of time I am talking about, but also in respect of his intellect. Now, as I have told you that Machiavelli was a child of Renaissance, he is often denoted more as a practical politician rather than a philosopher. Now, through his important notable works like The Prince, The Discourses on the First Ten Books of Titus, Livius, he depicted the spirit of Renaissance up to a great extent and his philosophy was mainly standing on the experience that he gained in life and was not dependent on any kind of supernatural idea. Okay, like in the prince was basically dedicated to medicine and there he basically praised the dynasty that stood for the exact opposite of the erstwhile republican sentiments. But on the other hand, in his discourses, there were attempts to, you know, uh, dissect the anatomy of the body politic on much more philosophical and historical foundation and there he somewhat affirms to republican sentiments more than the prince. Now, apart from the Renaissance, Machiavelli was also influenced by the existing conditions of Italy at that time. The Italian peninsula at that time was divided into a number of small states which were though independent but they were constantly at war with each other. You know, on top of that, the presence of France and Spain at the border was also acting as a threat to Italy. So, he basically wanted to unite these states and make them strong enough so that they can resist any kind of foreign attack that comes on them. Okay. Now, Machiavelli advocated some ideas which were symbolic to the modern age. The most important of which was perhaps his depiction of the secular state, my friends. The state which ignored the divine law of medieval times. That is, you can say that Machiavelli made a clear difference between the temporal and the spiritual authority. And my friends, he did not stop here only, but he also brought in the concept of national territorial state and made that completely independent of the Pope. And so, unlike the medieval time, the Machiavellian state was independent of the control of the Pope. Okay, so he separated between ethics and politics which is another important milestone of modern European thinking. He gave a full secular color to the politics of that time. He believed ethics and politics to be two different codes of conduct, one for the individual, the other for the ruler. However, I should mention here that please do not assume that Machiavelli was an anti-moralist from the above discussion, okay? Because he did not deny the role of private morality at individual life. But my point here is that he believed that private norms of morality and public sphere of politics should not be connected together. Okay? Now friends, Machiavelli's empirical observation regarding the nature of man paints a very dark and dismal picture on the character of human beings. In his work, The Prince, he depicts that human beings are basically selfish, wicked, degenerate and opportunist and cares about nothing more except his self-interest. They love their property more than anything else, even their parents. They are mostly driven by the motives of, you know, fear and then lust for power and that they are coward and ungrateful and they only what they love is nothing but power. Remember friends, I am telling you time and again that his observations were not based on any kind of philosophical idea but it was basically based on the existing chaotic conditions of Italy. However, Machiavelli's man was someone 
who was not ready to submit to the wish of God. He was confident enough to win over his own fate. So his ideas thus hovered around a kind of man who works hard for all material success and does not submit to his ill fortune in the name of God's wrath but was ready to win over his fortune by his own capability. So his man was brave enough to stand in front of God face to face in collision. So now let us have a look at Machiavelli's ideas on the state. Dealing with the state, Machiavelli talks about two types of state, a normal state and a perverted state. Now, in a normal state, citizens are faithful and they are generally abiding by the law and they also possess the spirit of patriotism. That is, they always remain faithful to their prince and also to their motherland. But in a perverted state, these qualities are all absent. Citizens are not faithful to their ruler, they were prone to break laws and they did not possess a very strong feeling for their motherland. So, according to Machiavelli, a normal state should always try to expand itself. That is, it should follow the policy of expansion. It should try to build up its mechanism in such a way that it becomes self-sufficient all by itself and need not depend on others on resources. It should have a very strong and reliable national army good soldiers, commanders and so on. And it also should be absolutely secular in nature. According to Machiavelli, man's virtue is achieved when he is guided towards power. You know, the basic ingredient of politics is power, as Machiavelli says. And the ways of preserving power after acquiring it is also very, very important according to him. So, Machiavelli wants his prince to be powerful and strong enough and that he should not allow others to become as powerful as himself. And therefore, we can say that according to Machiavelli, Power represents the highest good and that prince should not be restrained by any kind of, you know, morality or religious or ethical thinking and should always work to become more and more powerful with time. Now, apart from acquiring power, what are the other basic characteristics of the prince according to Machiavelli? According to Machiavelli, a prince should be of iron hands. That is, he must be able to crush all his oppositions very strongly. That is, protests and voice against him will not be tolerated or indulged by the prince. Okay? Then again, he should be a very quick decision maker. That is, the prince should not hesitate much in taking important decisions because that will emerge as a problem for him during the time of emergencies. So, a prince has to be very sharp and very quick, you know. Now, thirdly, the basic aim of the ruler will be to maintain peace throughout his territory and should also try to secure it from any kind of foreign invasion, for which he must possess a trained national army. And on the top of that, it is also important that the prince himself is also a very good soldier. And as you know that it is always important for leaders to become popular among the followers, right? Similarly, Machiavelli also says that the prince should try to maintain his popularity among his countrymen and should earn their love and affection. In this connection, let me mention that Machiavelli wanted the prince to be loved by the people, respected by the people of his country all the time, okay? Not hated by them. With that, the prince should try to cultivate the spirit of patriotism among his men through several methods like education, through religion and even by using his personal charisma. He should not touch under any circumstance the property and women of his subjects because Machiavelli believed that the people are very, very sensitive regarding these things and therefore the king should respect the sentiment of the people all the time. A prince should make friends and enemies according to his own convenience and demand and that there is no permanent friend and enemy to a king. So friends, he wanted his prince to be a good showman of an embodiment of, you know, kindness, chivalry, generosity, sincerity, bravery and of course humanity. He wanted his leaders to be like a lion and a fox. That is, he must be strong and courageous on one hand, he must be cunning like a fox on the other hand and the interest of the country should matter the most to him so that he may be loved, he may be respected, he may be feared at times but he should not be hated by his subjects at any point of time. Now friends talking about his major contributions as I have told you that he was a child of Renaissance 
so that factor influenced him a lot undoubtedly and being true to the style of renesa machiavelli separates power from ethics morality religion and metaphysics and you know sets up the state as an autonomous system of values which is independent and does not depend on any other source machiavelli believed that power was born from within human beings and not in any kind of morality or religion he separated politics from ethics and advocated the idea that politics was not a handmaid of ethics and thus offered a materialistic interpretation of the state by ignoring the metaphysical or supernatural elements from it and indeed he was the exponent of power politics as i have been telling you many times through this video the basic content of politics according to him was nothing else than power so machiavelli is often denoted as the first modern political philosopher who ends the medieval era and marks the beginning of the modern one so friends this was machiavelli's ideas in very short and simple way if you like my video please do press the like button and subscribe our channel feel free to comment and let me know if you want me to prepare any lecture on any philosopher you feel is needed for you very soon i will come up with some other interesting topic for you till then never stop learning keep on exploring bye bye take care and keep well